Hello, my class. Today I will be reading chapter 13 of Island of the Blue Dolphins. I did not sleep much the night before I went to the place of the sea elephants. I thought again about the law that forbade women to make weapons. I wondered if my arrows would go straight, and if they did, would they pierce the animal's hide? What if one of the bulls turned on me? What if I were injured and then had to fight the wild dogs as I dragged myself homeward? I thought about these things most of the night, but with the sun I was up and on my way to the place where the sea elephants lived. When I reached the cliff, the animals had left the reef and gathered along the shore. Like gray boulders, the bulls sat on the pebbly slope. Below them, the cows and their babies played in the waves. Perhaps it is not right to speak of young sea elephants as babies, for they are as large as a man. But they are still babies in many ways. They follow their mothers around, waddling along on their flippers like children learning to walk, making crying sounds and sounds of pleasure that only the young make. And before they will leave the shore and learn to swim, their mothers have to push them into the sea, which is often difficult to do because of their size. Some distance separated the bulls from each other, for they are bad-tempered, very jealous by nature and quick to fight over anything that displeases them. There were six of them below me on the slope, each sitting alone like a great chief, watching his herd of cows and babies. The cow had a smooth, has a smooth body and a face that looks much like that of a mouse, with a sharp pointed nose and whiskers, but the bull is different. His nose has a large hump on it, which hangs down over his mouth. His skin is rough and looks like wet earth that is dried in the sun and cracked. He is an ugly animal. From the top of the cliff, I looked down at each of the sea elephants and tried to choose the smallest of the six. They were all the same size save one, which was the farthest from me and partly hidden by a rock. He was about half as large as the others, a young bull. Since no cows were playing among the waves in front of him, I knew that he did not have a herd of his own and for that reason would not be so wary or quickly angered. Quietly, I let myself down over the edge of the cliff. To reach him, I had to pass behind the others, being careful not to alarm them. They fear nothing and would not move if they saw me, but it was better, I thought, not to put them on their guard. I carried my new bow, which was almost as tall as I was, and five arrows. The path was rough and covered with small stones. I took pains not to send them tumbling down the slope. I was also careful not to be seen by the cows, which get alarmed easily and would have warned the rest of the herd with their cries. I crawled behind a big rock near the young bull. I then got to my feet and fitted an arrow to the bow, although I suddenly remembered my father's warning that because I was a woman, the bow would break. The sun was far in the west, but luckily my shadow fell away from the young bull. The distance between us was short and his back was turned squarely toward me. Still, I did not know where to place the first arrow, whether in his shoulders or in his head. The skin of the sea elephant is rough, yet very thin, but beneath it are thick layers of fat, and though his body is large, his head is small and make a poor target. While I stood there behind the rock, not knowing what to do, again aware of my father's warning that a bow in the hands of a woman would always break in a time of danger, the animal began to move toward the shore. At first I thought that by some chance he had heard me, I soon saw that he was on his way toward the cows that belonged to the old bull sitting nearby. The sea elephant moves fast in spite of his size, waddling along on his great flippers which he uses like hands. The bull was nearing the water. I let the arrow go and it went straight. At the last instant he changed direction, and though the bow did not break, the arrow passed harmlessly to one side. I had failed to notice that the old bull was moving down the slope until I heard stones grating against each other. Quickly, he overtook his rival and with a single thrust of his shoulders, overturned him. The young bull stood as high as a tall man and was twice that length, yet from the force of the blow, he rolled into the water and lay there stunned. The old bull bore down on him, swinging his head and bellowing so loud it echoed against the cliffs. The herd of cows and calves who were lying in the waves and scratching their backs with their flippers stopped to watch the battle. Two of the cows were in the bull's path as he waddled toward his rival, but he went over them as if they were small stones. Using his tusk-like teeth, he ripped a long gash in the young bull's side. The young bull raised himself, and as he turned, his small eyes shone fiercely red. 
When the old bull slashed at him again, he struck first and sunk his teeth into the other's neck. He did not let go, and the two rolled over in the waves, splashing water high into the air. The cows had scattered by now, but the other bulls still sat quietly on the slope. The two fighters paused, getting ready for a new attack. It was a good chance to send an arrow into the young bull, who lay on his back with his teeth still grasping the other's neck. But I hoped that he would win the battle, and I stood there and did not move. The old bull had many deep scars on his head and shoulders from battles he had fought before. Suddenly, he lashed out with his tail, trying to loose the hold on his neck, and struck the side of a rock. With his tail against the rock, he flung his body out of the water and thus broke away. He came quickly up the slope, his great mouth open, the young bull close behind him. He came toward me, and in haste to get out of his way, not knowing whether he was bent on attacking me, I stepped back. In doing so, I tripped over a stone and fell to my knees. I felt a sharp pain in my leg, but was quickly up. By this time, the old bull had whirled around and turned upon his pursuer so fast that the young bull was taken by surprise. Again, the young bull's flank was ripped deep, and again the force of the blow threw him back into the water. The waves grew redder from his blood, but this time he rolled over and was waiting for the charge. He met the old bull with his shoulder. The sound was like rocks crashing together. Once more, the young bull caught the other's throat, and together they disappeared beneath the wave. When they came up, they were still locked together. The sun had gone down, and it was so dark I could no longer see clearly. My leg had now begun to hurt. Since I had a long way to go, I left them. I could hear their bellowing as I went up the cliff, and for a long time afterward. And that's the end of chapter 13. We'll start with chapter 14 next. Have a great day.